untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Colorless Karn Living Legacy deck featuring the 4-mana Planeswalker from Dominaria United. Starts out at 4 loyalty and can plus 1 to create a tapped Power Stone token, which is an artifact token that makes a colorless mana, but we can only spend it to cast essentially artifacts or to use it on abilities, since we cannot use it to cast non-artifact spells. But for most intents and purposes in this deck, this will just function as most of our other ramp artifacts, so an excellent plus one ability, then the minus one can provide a bit of card advantage by spending any amount of mana and then digging that deep to find any card we can cast for the turn, and then the minus seven emblem, which is quite achievable if we focus on the plus one early on, can also give us a very powerful emblem, saying we can tap an untapped artifact we control at any point to deal one damage to any target, so that can easily take over the game. So of course our deck is going to feature a ton of ramp cards to try and get Karn in play early and of course to ramp into the various expensive artifacts and other colorless cards we have access to in Historic Brawl. Now you may notice our mana base as well only has three basic planes. Usually in Commander you would have to play basic wastes as your basic of choice in these colorless decks since our color identity of course is colorless. But since we don't have wastes on Arena we're allowed to play basics of one color going for three planes since we we have a few cards that synergize with it, like we've got Field of Ruin, and then we also have access to the 4-mana uh, Solemn, which can find a basic when it enters, so that's why having a few basics is still worth it. Otherwise, the entire mana base consists of these colorless lands, which of course offer a ton of utility as well, which is one of the perks of being a colorless deck. And then we can also take advantage of all that colorless mana once we play Forsaken Monument, which will essentially double our mana production, give our colorless creatures plus two plus two, and whenever we cast a colorless spell, we also gain two life. So there's a few of these big payoff cards that are awesome if you draw them that will take over the game in any colorless strategy like this one. Then I've divided the deck into a few different categories, starting with a ramp, and there's a ton of it here, not going to go over every individual card, but a ton at two mana. You may notice the absence of uh, the two mana signet, which of course doesn't work in a colorless deck, since our commander doesn't have a color identity like most other cards do, so that won't be able to make any mana, so no signet at two mana, but most of the other options. And then at three, also a Foundry Inspector to discount artifact spells, which I still lumped into the ramp category, tons of three mana artifacts. And then we continue here at four mana with Vessel, Archive, Familiar also discounts historic spells by one. We've got Key to the Archive, Solemn can find a basic, and then Forsaken Monument that we've already discussed, Gilded Lotus, and then Dreamstone Hadron at six, and Ugin the Ineffable also gives our colorless spells a two mana discount in addition to offering a bit of interaction and being able to provide advantage with the plus one. Then the next section is card advantage, artifacts that draw additional cards, Maze Mind Tome, Bank Buster, Treasure Map can scry, eventually transforms into Treasure Cove, making a bunch of treasures that can turn into extra cards. We've got Cosmos Elixir, Mystic Forge, another great payoff for any deck like this, as we'll be able to play our colorless spells off the top of our deck. Then the Weather Lights can also hit the opponent and find a Historic Spell, which includes all our artifacts. And then the Deck of Many Things can also draw two or maybe get cards back out of our graveyard. Then the next section are the creatures, ways we can actually impact the board and attack and block. We've got Heart of Kiron, which can easily be crewed also with our Planeswalker by removing a loyalty counter. And then a nice 2-mana 4-4 flyer with Vigilance. We've got Patchwork Automaton, slowly picks up more counters over time. Steel Overseer can put plus 1 counters on all our artifact creatures. We've got Voltaic Servant, which can untap an artifact at the beginning of our end step, which can also come in handy. Chief will give all our artifact creatures plus 1 plus 1. Good Crystalline Giant, just a good individual card that will pick up more abilities as time goes on. Nettle Sist, another great payoff in a deck like this, getting plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control, and has a living weapon, so it comes attached to a germ token, so even if the opponent kills our germ, we can still move the Nettle Sist to the next creature. Then there's Karn Cyanoversa, providing Karn advantage with the plus one and minus one, making a Karn Struct token with a minus two. Then Myriad Constructs, also just a fine card, can also be kicked to pick up additional counters. And then Atraxos we can easily untap as a 7-7 Trampler. 
And then there's the Wandering Archaic as one of the few colorless cards that's not an artifact. There's not many in the deck, so we do have to be careful that our Power Stone tokens don't actually help us cast the Wandering Archaic, but pretty good against any decks with lots of instants and sorceries. We've got Hanger Back Walker, which we can sink a ton of mana into, and then when it dies it leaves behind some 1-1 Thopter tokens, and Stone Quill Serpent we can also play if we have a lot of mana available, but can also be played as a cheap blocker to maybe protect our Karn so we can get to the ultimate. Then the next section is interaction, ways to interact with opposing permanents. Array can tap opposing creatures down, Ratchet Bomb can slowly ratchet up and eventually destroy all permanents with the same mana value. We've got Sky Sovereign, deals 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters or attacks. We've got Meteor Golem, can destroy any non land permanents when it enters. There's Platinum Angel, not really interaction, but the opponent will have to answer it, otherwise they cannot win the game and we cannot lose the game. And then at 10 mana, Ulamog, again we can't use our Power Stone tokens to ramp it out, but we've got plenty of other ramp cards to play the 10 mana Legendary Eldrazi, which will exile 2 permanents when we cast it, so even if it gets countered we still get to exile 2 things. And then at 10 10 Indestructible, that will also mill the opponent when it attacks. And then the final category is kind of the miscellaneous, including a Jada's Gift, which has great synergy with Karn, since we can turn it into a creature, and then it's much easier to keep Karn alive if the opponent is attacking it with a bunch of creatures, and then makes it easier to get to the minus 7 ultimate to win the game. And then a Shadow Spear can give our creatures plus one plus one, a lifelink and trample. Sculpting Steel can copy any of our artifacts in play. We've got a Lithoform Engine, which can also do some fun things like copying our permanent spells or triggered abilities. Paradox Engine doesn't need an introduction, an incredibly busted card in a deck with lots of ramp artifacts. And then Godfarer's Statue will make all the opponent's spells more expensive. And finally, Godfarer's Gift can get our creatures back from the graveyard in the form of 4 4 zombie tokens with haste. And then not going to go over every individual colorless land in the mana base, but as you can imagine, a few creature lands as well that can come in handy, and other cards that can provide a bit of card advantage. But again, do want to maximize the number of colorless lands because of Forsaken Monument, otherwise you could easily play more basics. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Florian, red, black, aggro, and we've got a keeper. Turn to Guardian Idol, sets up turn 3, Karn. And then uh, got a bit of interaction with Ratchet Bomb, which can also go after a knight eventually. There is an advantage to playing Solemn first, but I'm fine to play Karn, likely to survive an attack. And will generate a bigger advantage over time, I think. Plenty of artifacts and abilities to use the Power Stone. Not an issue in this deck. Sometimes you will want to try and cast a 10 mana Ulamog and it doesn't help there. But uh, for the most part, it's just as good as a Guardian Idol, for instance. Alright, it's going to be a Blood Thief. And our opponent gets plus one counter on a Knight. Okay, so let's keep making Power Stone tokens. And then play Solemn plus Ratchet Bomb, I think. Gives us a blocker, and then Ratchet Bomb can deal with a Knight. Even though our opponent's still incentivized to attack us instead of Karn. Let's see if we can reach an ultimate. Also can't forget about some of our creature lands here, Mobilized District could be animated, although probably more interested in drawing more cards with Maze Mind Tome first. So we'll see if they want to sacrifice the Blood Thief. They don't, so just an attack for two going face. That's acceptable, no need to chump just yet. We'll make it easier to protect our Karn. And then make sure we put a counter on Ratchet Bomb. Okay, so... Plus up to 7. And then... I guess maybe go Tome. And then keep up Mobilized Districts. And maybe even Guardian Idol as an extra blocker as opposed to... 
playing a mana geode. Try and protect our Karn at all costs and hope there's no immediate answer to it. And then once we get an emblem, it should be smooth sailing. Opponents get to play with Fire for Solemn. That's fine. Get to draw. And we'll see where these creatures are headed before deciding our next move. Alright, so Florian goes face, the others at Karn. So I guess we start by blowing up Ratchet Bomb. And then maybe animate Mobilize District. Go to Blockers. And then I can still draw with the Tome. Opponent does get to dig pretty deep for a potential answer to Karn. Could have been a reason to trump with Idol, but they could also have an answer in hand already. Just exiles a mountain. And a Radiating Lightning, 3 damage to target player, 1 damage to each creature that player controls. So we'll finish off the district, but does not damage Karn. So that works for me. Alright. So untap, emblem. And then we should be able to take out Florian right now. Start by playing Automaton, tapping our lands instead of our artifacts. And I'll play a Geo too. And Servants, I guess, is good enough. It untaps an artifact each turn, good with Emblem. So one at a time. Can tap Automaton too. And one more. Probably don't need to use Tome since we can draw and we don't need to Scry. So maybe better off keeping the Automaton untapped in case of any haste creatures. Probably doesn't matter at this point. So yeah, opponent's in trouble. They need some mass artifact destruction basically. Or some very large creatures to survive the emblem. People made fun of Karn when he was first revealed, but this emblem does not mess around. Professor Onyx can deal with Automaton. Or I could animate Idol, I guess it would still get the Automaton as the largest creature. But we can finish off the Planeswalker with our emblem, opponent's just gonna plus instead. So end of turn, 2 damage to Onyx. And yeah, I don't think our opponent's realistically recovering from this. Unless they have some combo finish out of nowhere. So I can replay Karn as well if I'd like. Tapping my lands instead of my artifacts. And now each power stone is quite impactful. I'll just attack Onyx and keep my artifacts untapped. Alright, so we've got 6 damage here at instant speed, and I guess make it 7 thanks to the Servant. So it's not going to take too long for this to be a lethal. Opponent's fighting the good fight, not quite demoralized enough. Infernal Grasp will cost him some life, and then we can tap it on the way out. Could also minus one Karn to find more action if we draw blank. But can't really go wrong here. Pestilent Spirits is worth killing. And round of applause for our opponent here, not conceding when 99% of opponents would have. OK, 
Okay, untap, deck of many things is excellent. So I'll keep plussing. Tap my lands, an arduous process. And then we can activate to potentially draw. Alright, we rolled a 1. Still get back Mobilize District. That works for me. And sure, we'll uh, hit for 1. Can also untap the deck of many things if I'd like. Keep all our mana available. And by the time we untap, we should have lethal. There's Florian again. But now we can just go upstairs with all our artifacts. Theater to gain one. I think we still have that covered. And a feed this swarm is going to cost them some life too. Okay. Wish there was a faster way of tapping all our artifacts here. But gotta do it one by one. Could have also drawn two with deck of many things since we had a land untapped. So only would have missed out on a couple points, but uh, yeah, opponent finally throws in the towel when we have lethal on board. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems promising. Basically hoping that uh, Paradox Engine can go off, so could use more artifacts to go with it. Dungeon map will do. And then we'll scry towards an extra land. Could have maybe waited one more turn. Also an argument for keeping Array to trigger Paradox Engine for one mana, but I'll just curve out. Opponent on an Arcadus Defender's deck. Not off to a particularly fast start, so we have time to set up. Various 3 mana ramp artifacts, so we're good now for Paradox Engine. And the land is good too. So dungeon map plus maze mind tomb will do. Let's cry towards more lands, and then hopefully have a big paradox engine turn soon. Arcadus will let the carry to attack for five. So yeah, does not mess around here. Put an upkeep stop so I can scry again if there's no lands, but we'll keep that one. Okay. So if I play Engine right now, doesn't leave enough mana to do anything else, so I could maybe wait. Or if I go Terminal, I'm also one mana short. So maybe we go Terminal plus Simulacrum, and then next turn, Engine. Or I can just play the Engine now, which is maybe still better. So yeah, had I kept the Array, I would have been able to untap a bunch of my artifacts and maybe still draw with Tomb, but that's okay. So scheduled to take 8 here. Arcadus only deals 3 damage, and now a bunch of cheap defenders to draw. I raise 2 mana to activate, so we'll take 8, and then still happy to scry with Tomb, looking for Anything interesting? Stone Coil, I guess, is not bad. As a cheap way to trigger Engine. So how do we want to start here? Tap our Mana Rocks. Play Terminal. Could Scry with Tomb. Or we can wait to draw since we'll have a lot of mana here. So maybe just start by drawing. Finds Jada's Gift, okay. Play Terminal, untap. Can play Karn, untap. And then maybe equip Jada's Gift. Sure. Make a Power Stone, which we also get to untap here. So we'll float some mana. Use 
Could play a simulacrum too. Double Q will also float all our mana. Simulacrum can draw with Tome, but I guess I'll search up first. Don't have many planes left. So double tap Q, and then now maybe draw with Tome. Play a Ratchet Bomb, which we can start taking up if we'd like. And then Stone Coil for 6 will do. And then I can still equip for 1 mana and potentially tap another creature down. Okay, so that was quite the turn. And then the Ratchet Bomb can also be sacrificed if needed. Also have a few mana sinks here with the dungeon map and terminal in case we draw land. And now Karn is a creature, so it won't be easy for the opponent to take it out, and we can slowly work up towards an emblem. Serpent also just a good blocker. So suppose we'll tap something down here. Even though Serpent has protection from multicolored, I guess they could have a pump spell. Was a reason to tap the Karyatid instead. That's okay. We'll uh, block here, jump here, and then I can always blow up a Ratchet Bomb on one counter to deal with a wall. Right, tower defense, glad they fired it off already. So deal with the wall to keep serpents. I guess we also lose our Jada's gift, but that's okay. Still have our stone coil. And then Karn could minus one, although still have hopes of reaching an ultimate. So let's plus. And then just play a big construct. I can kick it as well if I'd like. That's seven mana total. Sure. And then I could keep Sliver Hive in hand. So you maybe discard with a network terminal. And then I guess Crawling Barons is better. Can I put some counters on it or do I keep my mana? I guess uh, we also blew up the array in the process last turn. So probably no point in animating Guardian Idol to attack Watley. So let's maybe just activate Dungeon Map. And then Scry 1. Deck of many things seems perfect. Okay, I think we're good here. Pass it back. Construct blocks Carotid, Stone Coil blocks Arcades. And a Teo, that's fine. Opponent is drawing quite a bit with Arcades, so it'll eventually overpower us. But hoping we can Emblem Karn in the meantime. We've got Guardian Idol and Barons as additional blockers if needed. So let us tap these for mana, make an extra one, and play our deck of many things. And then deck plus Paradox Engine could potentially go off. Roll the one, still get back array. Okay, so we can keep going. Don't quite want to tap everything since I might want my creature lands available. Activate deck. 
draw two. A land shadow spear, so we can keep going. Making a lot of mana in the process. Play shadow spear. I suppose I could use array to tap some creatures down, attack the opponent's Teo, and then still untap Serpent. Probably is going to take me too long to go through all that. Draw two. Okay, so float some more mana. Could also loot, I guess, with the uh, terminal discard buried rune. Even though it could get back something out of the graveyard. And then tap all our artifacts again. Yeah, turns with Paradox Engine usually take a while. And I'm definitely not opposed to it eventually getting banned in Historic Brawl. Since there's lots of infinite combos with it and other shenanigans. But for now we're happy to be controlling it. Float some mana. And then I should activate Deck of Many Things first. Draw two. Play Lantern. Load more mana. Activate terminal. Discarding territory. And maybe at this point I should also just start going through more dungeons. Since we have plenty of mana. Make a goblin. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've got this one covered. As long as we don't mess up or run out of time. Draw two, and then Lithoform Engine plus Paradox Engine also has kind of its own combo. So Embarrassment of Riches. Can use Terminal. Probably don't need Ornithopter. Land also can go. And then go through the dungeon. Make more mana. And then activate deck of many things, I suppose. Cast Chief, and then we can use our Lithoform Engine to copy the Paradox Engine trigger to untap everything again. So that basically makes infinite mana, not that we were struggling with mana. Alright, at this point I'll just double tap Q since I don't think I'm activating Crawling Barons anymore. And then, sure, we'll tap some creatures down. Maybe get an attack in with the Stone Coil. And then I could also copy Chief with a Lithoform Engine while we're here. And then Sculpting Steel can copy Chief once again if we'd like. Maybe a Lithoform Engine to copy it an extra time. Alright, make some more mana. Just gonna empty my hand before I activate Deck of Many Things here. And we might just be able to kill our opponent this turn. Not something I had envisioned. But here we are. So we'll draw. And 
then, uh, sure. Platinum Angel and Godfarrow's gift. The gift that keeps on giving. Alright, so all the points creatures are tapped. So now... Float some more mana, play Godfarrow's gift, which can get back... Solemn. And then I think if we animate Guardian Idol, we just have Lethal here. Alright, so no Karn Emblem, but still pretty impressive kill. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Perforos Bronze Blooded, which can be quite the combo deck. So we need to be off to a fast start. This hand's a little bit slow, and we're not casting Ulamog anytime soon. So I don't think I can keep. Okay, this is a little bit better, I guess. If our opponent's deck performs according to plan, we're probably still going to die around turn 5, turn 6. But we'll give it the old college try. Truxos, I guess, is a pretty fast clock. So it could curve Giant into Truxos since uh, the extra mana from Heirloom and Obelisk doesn't do much. Got a plus one counter, that's gonna be good. Although opponent can already play Perforos and maybe next turn cheat two large creatures into play. So yeah, I'll play a Traxos. And then next turn we could untap it. Got lifelink. Probably one of the better keywords here. Up to 29. Don't think we'll necessarily die here, but opponent can certainly do some damage. And it's not impossible for them to deal 29. Just a hard cast glory bringer to exert and kill giant. Fair enough. So devotion up to three. And then now can just play myriad constructs to keep up the pressure. Attack for seven. Another 4-4. Four, four. Doesn't line up great against Glorybringer once they untap it. But at least for now it's still tapped. Itali. Yeah, it does have haste thanks to Perforos. So an attack for 13. And what did they exile? Banner and Pacification Array. At least that one they won't be able to activate. Banner on red. Means we're taking 15 now. Don't quite have lethal on the way back. Even if we animate Crawling Barons. Since we also need to untap Traxo still. So yeah, I think we're dead here. Yeah, best we can do. Maybe Obelisk attack. And then untap Traxos once again. And then I could block Itali. Still die. So that doesn't quite do it. And they can exert to kill Construct, so... Leaving it back as a blocker is not going to help. Alright, GG's to our opponent. Got him to 3 at least. And we'll pass. They can also just activate the pacification array here. So yeah, this game went pretty much according to plan for the opponents and kind of how we suspected it would go. Angros Marauder is also very good. Yeah, you need a bit more instant speed interaction to stand a chance against Perforos. And uh, this is going to be quite a turn. Dracuseth with Marauders doubling damage. So if you're interested in seeing the Perforos deck in action, I covered it a few months, maybe almost a year ago now. So you can always check that out if you're interested. Hidaro off uh, Itali and Dracuseth almost kills us. Opponent still gets a chance to deal combat damage. And let's see how high the number goes. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Early Cold Steel Hearts. Try and ramp out our Gilded Lotus as soon as possible. Facing. Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. So also going to have quite a few artifacts, I'm sure. 
Turn to Artificer, at least doesn't play Joyra next turn. So next turn we can play Karn, make a Power Stone. And a Relic to shut down our Graveyard. Alright, Archive now is probably the preferred play. Although getting a Planeswalker down might still be worth it. While our opponent can't easily counter it, make a Power Stone. And that will generate quite a bit of mana over time, potentially more than the Archive. Even though we could have gone Archive into Bank Buster here. I guess we also had the option of Archive and then use the Pacification Array in the opponent's upkeep to tap down Artificer to maybe deny one mana. Jar is familiar to discount all historic spells by one. That's also pretty good. I'll keep Desert in hand in case we can deal damage to a Planeswalker. For now, just gonna keep plussing. Play Lotus into Archive. And then the question is Bangbuster versus Use Array. Do we have any hope of uh, ultimating Karn? Yeah, I guess we might be able to. If they focus too much on using Artificer for ramp. And there's Jora. Followed by a bunch of one man hour free artifacts, I'm sure. Maze Mind Tome for one. They can scry. And then now use Array, time down familiar. And Artificer can attack Karn for one if they want. They don't. Do I keep plussing Living Legacy? I think so, since we might be able to ultimate next turn. Make a Karnstruct with Cyanoverza. And then I could play a hanger back walker. Or bankbuster to start drawing. Or potentially both. Let's go for X equals three here. And then I'll wait on bankbuster until next turn. And hopefully ultimates a living legacy. Ornithopter, free card draw. And seek new knowledge, another cantrip. So yeah, maybe the one damage they didn't deal with Artificer could come back to bite them a little bit. Maybe they were keeping up some interaction through the Golden Egg somehow. But we'll see. Ankle Lantern, more free cantrips thanks to Familiar, which is doing a lot of work. And there's Ugin. Well, at least it doesn't destroy anything in our colorless deck. So time down Familiar. Amulet for free. Now they get a 3 mana discount for their colorless spells, essentially, between Familiar and Ugin. Tap an untapped artifact you control, it deals 1 damage to any target. Can take out Joyra. And our opponent explodes, yeah, Karn Emblem seals the deal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Dina, Black, Green, Alive, Gain, and Drain. And we've got a promising hand, including our Forsaken Monument. Although also it drew one of our three planes, which is a bit of a nombo with it. But we'll still be able to make plenty of mana with it. Turn to Mindstone, and then maybe a Karn next turn. There's Dina, good synergy with a turn one Banehound. 
All right, so now do we still Karn? I think so. We'll still make a Power Stone to play Monuments next turn. Maybe soak up some damage. And then once we have a Monument in play, we can go off. Could also be worth it to go Lotus into Lantern and then turn after Monument and still have a bunch of mana left over. Since we can use the mana from Lotus and the Plains, which doesn't synergize with Monument. Whenever you get a chance to play a ramp artifact and tap it for mana right away in a useful manner, it's usually worth it. So, well, plus, Sky Sovereign's also an option, but let's just generate more mana. And then Lantern. Alright, so next turn we'll have all the mana we need to uh, empty our hand, pretty much. Opponent ramping with Cultivates. And now a final parting. So they're maybe trying to set up a two-card infinite combo with Dina, maybe Vito's involved. Puts a another tutor in the graveyard. Well, probably need some interaction here for Dina. Blaststone could also interact with a Banehound. And a Shadow Spear. Alright, so step one is play Monuments using as much colored mana as possible. And then we'll keep plussing. Sky Sovereign kills Dina. Play Constructs. And Shadow Spear as well. Okay. Pretty good turn. Pass it back. And then next turn we can maybe use the minus one to find some more action cards. Crewing Sky Sovereign with maybe a Shadow Spear. Can gain us some life back. And we'll just keep killing Dina over and over if we get the chance. That's fine. Familiar we can play. So... Play Familiar. That can crew Sky Sovereign. I'm still more scared of Dina than the Gifted Aetherborn, to be honest. Um, maybe I should just minus one first, and then how much do we pay? Let's say four. Finding a Godfather statue, that should do. Gets a discount from Familiar. And then equip Construct if they want to trade for Aetherborn, that's fine by me. And attack. Killing Dina. On the off chance that it can set up some combos. And then now it's going to be very difficult for the opponent to do anything while the statue's in play. And then we can just leverage our Karn advantage and uh, take over. Banehound for one. Suppose I could have equipped Shadow Spear, second main. I can cash in Karn if I'd like. Seems worth it. Can always replay it pretty easily. And then pay maybe six. We need Finding a Bank Buster, which can draw. Can replay Karn, find another card, although Traxo seems fine. Traxo is also pretty good synergy with vehicles. If we can maybe untap it several times in the same turn, it can crew a bunch of different vehicles. So how much mana do we have left here? Not a whole lot. Can maybe... Plus Karn now. 
or I can maybe minus x equals 1 or 2. Now yeah, let's go for x equals 1 here. Just draw a card, basically. Find a Nettle Cyst. Perfect. Second crew, Sky Sovereign. Still play Nettle Cysts. Untap Traxos. And then one mana left. Don't think there's anything to use it on. Our opponent did have the removal letter ready for Sky Sovereign. That's fair. And we'll uh, just hit for four then. And then next turn we should have enough. Can give our germ token trample with Shadow Spear. So our opponent's gonna need a bunch more spot removal, but if they spend their turn killing my creatures, we can just pull ahead with the extra card advantage between Bankbuster and Karn. So, yeah, this game seems all wrapped up. But yeah, there's the Exquisite Blood, probably part of the combo that our opponent searched up a few turns ago with the final parting. That plus, let's say, a Veto is an infinite loop, and they even have the Banehout in play to enable it. But uh, luckily, we get to close out the game here. Equipment Nettle Cysts, and attack, and that should do it. Sweet. All right. So good to see our colorless Karn Living Legacy deck in action. And yeah, while maybe not as good as some of the other colorless planeswalkers you could be playing, like maybe Ugin the Ineffable at six, still pretty synergistic with all the other ramp artifacts you have access to in Historic Brawl. And the emblem also seems quite attainable, especially if you have Jada's Gift to turn Karn into a creature, then the opponent needs a bit different interaction than just being able to attack it with our creatures. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.